Hello, everybody, and a very warm welcome to the Reiki Revolution Live on YouTube. At the moment, I can't see whether anybody's watching. Oh, now there are suddenly 50 people watching. That's brilliant. It does come with a little bit of a delay, and um, I find all this still incredibly scary. But somehow we managed so far and i'm sure we'll manage tonight to connect to share reiki to get more information about reiki and to deepen our path with the help of reiki of self-development of connecting more deeply with the universe so it's wonderful having you all here and their greetings from New York, from London, from New Jersey, from Canada, um, from uh, Vegas, uh, Rhode Island, Los Angeles. Um, we have a guest today from San Diego. So it's very, very um, international. Fantastic. <laughs> Great that you're all here. Absolutely wonderful. So I'm going to um, just speak about uh, a few new developments uh, for a few moments and then go a little bit deeper into today's or tonight's topic, wherever you are in the world. Um, we decided to have a bit more kind of topics to go by rather than just guests. And uh, tonight's uh, topic is primarily uh, going much, much deeper into what Reiki really is. Um, I did something incredibly scary and it's probably ridiculously premature to share that but I had a lovely chat with my neighbor. Um, wonderful. She is really, she's just sent from the universe, my new neighbor. We get on so well and she decided I should get on TikTok. Um, which I thought was for people about a quarter of my age primarily, but she decided it uh, isn't and I should give it a try. And YouTube is great to connect, to have these shows, to do films, but of course the daily and quicker, hopefully even live interaction is much easier on TikTok. And um, uh, reflecting on this, I had this idea that I might share what's coming into my mind intuitively, guidance-wise, observation-wise during the course of the day and from time to time just put that online. So apparently there are another 594 toss links already or the numbers are random or I don't know whatever, but that is the handle or whatever it's called, my thing on TikTok. So there isn't anything on there yet, but I will start tomorrow. I just wanted to mention it and I'm going to put it in the next newsletter as well, toss um, 595. Um, on TikTok. I don't even know how to find things on there. Anyway, I'll figure it out. <laughs> but they, it does come with a tutorial in, on how to do the films. So um, that's going to do something um, that's uh, starting tomorrow. Um, then when I was thinking about what to do today and uh, what to talk about, I realized a lot of people talk about their paths with Reiki and how Reiki changed them and uh, how they use it in their daily practice and so on, which is absolutely wonderful. So we personally all have these amazing stories with Reiki. But I still feel when we speak to the public, when we introduce Reiki, that there is a very distinct lack of clarity about what Reiki really is. In fact, I really feel there's a very, very big misunderstanding. And we'll later see if my guest uh, Yolanda will agree with my observation. But I really feel there's a very, very, very big misunderstanding when it comes to what Reiki really is. We 
tend to describe Reiki as an energy healing technique or as a complementary therapy. This is how we bill it when we sell it to hospitals and when we go into private practice and also as a tool for stress reduction. And uh, if we are a bit braver, then we may add and for spiritual or self-development. The system that we call Reiki today goes back to Mikao Usui. At least this is how it is <clears throat> commonly seen and, uh, and professionally accepted. And um, Mikao Usui, after his, well, after a rather successful time as an entrepreneur um, in Tokyo, he had a complete breakthrough. And he just wasn't able to get his life back on track. Physically, he was okay. So he was certainly not looking for a complementary therapy. What he was looking for was a deeper understanding of why he went through this difficult time and um, what he should change. So he eventually went to a monastery, or in fact, as my, my research showed, three monasteries in Kyoto, to understand the mystery of the universe, the mystery of our existence, but primarily to kind of go beyond the difficulties uh, in our existence and uh, find a deep personal spiritual connection. And he didn't. After three years, he was completely frustrated and he saw no other way to go into the wilderness to move away and to meditate and to fast, which brought him to the brink of death to see whether when he leaves everything behind, <clears throat> there was a space opening up where he could find that. And after 21 days, of course, that is a very famous story about how Reiki started, he suddenly saw light. And he said it was so blinding that he had to lay down and to close his eyes. It was still there, the light. He felt an incredible connection. He, um, in his own words, said there was a pressure above his head. He said he felt Reiki above his head. Reiki being the highest frequency in the universe, where all frequencies basically come together, the, the starting point of creation. So the highest levels of existence of energy in the universe, this is what he felt. In contemporary language, we would say he felt his crown chakra opening. And this was his big breakthrough. And then accidentally, uh, very literally, because he had an accident with his toe um, and uh, it started bleeding and hurting like mad. He bent down and he placed his hands around it and he found out that he also had healing powers. He then created the system of Reiki and we don't know exactly how he was teaching it. But his focus seems to have indeed been the complementary therapy side to start with. People came from near and far to seek healing and he showed people how to use Reiki for themselves to feel better and other people. He also introduced Reiki principles, so there was an element of self-development. And he is said to have waited until he could feel that people really felt very deeply this energetic connection, and then they were trained further and further. And um, then over the years, uh, one of his Reiki master students, Shujiro Hayashi, started his own clinic in Tokyo which was primarily focused on physical healing. And his student, Hawaii Takata, then brought it into the Western and basically into the world. And this is where the majority of what people these days learn in Reiki is based on. There are some uh, uh, Japanese traditions uh, like Jikiden Reiki, with, uh, which our uh, guest Yolanda tonight has also trained in, and they are more based in the uh, original uh, Japanese techniques, but still it goes back to uh, Chujira Hayashi. So for a long time, Reiki was primarily taught and marketed as a complementary therapy that uh, leads to physical 
improvement, uh, stress reduction. And sometimes people would sneakily add and a bigger kind of a deeper spiritual understanding. But of course, people see colors. People have floating experiences. People um, get insight and intuition and they change their lives completely. None of that is because it's a complementary therapy. It is because it basically creates a connection. And I think this is the big misunderstanding of Reiki. We so often ask, what Reiki can do, rather than ask where Reiki connects us to. And once we feel the connection, we develop uh, from feeling a connection to realizing I'm part of it. I am opening up, or we are opening up to uh, the reality that the entire universe is connected. And this is the whole idea behind the Reiki revolution, behind the weekly broadcasts to deepen this understanding and to really live every day in this connection to the universe, to other people, to creation, to nature, to animals, to everything, because everything is interconnected. Ultimately, it means to live a life from our heart. And I would like to do a little exercise uh, to um, uh, begin with, just to really get us into the beautiful experience that Reiki always gives us. I would like to invite you for a moment to just bring your hands together and connect to Reiki. And then just feel the connection with the universe. Just take a moment to trace it back and sense what you are connected to. Feel the connection to the source of the energy. And then bring your awareness just into your heart. Feel how your heart is connected. And then from your heart, just sense into the world and feel your connection with the entire creation, with people, with the globe, with nature. And then just take a moment to Thank Reiki and uh, come back into the here and now and open your eyes again. I normally don't go to these very big events, but somehow on Saturday, I felt I should go to the big pride event in London. And there were one million people on the streets. And I was just there for an hour and the big parade had already gone, but it was still crazy but crazily peaceful and beautiful. What for so many years, for decades, used to be a demonstration for equality, for acceptance, turned into a celebration of interconnectedness, of love, of oneness, of respect. And that was really amazing. It was actually so embarrassing. At some stage, I had to look to the side because I started crying, just walking around the streets with all people in rainbow colors. And somebody came with some glitter and put it on my cheek at some stage. Um, but that wasn't really the point. The point was suddenly to feel people from all age groups, from all ethnic backgrounds, from all religious backgrounds, um, all ages, they, they, they came together to celebrate. And it really gave me this idea 
or this hope that one day we will not just once a year celebrate this beautiful achievement of more inclusivity, but to just live like that every day at work, celebrate and respect inclusivity, be open, do our decisions and uh, work together from our heart rather than from our mind. This was just really, really beautiful. And uh, I am, uh, I really think that Reiki can be an incredible tool on this path. Earlier this year, it wasn't that long ago, it was probably two months or so, I was uh, invited to take part in the yet to be uh, screened or launched uh, Reiki Summit that Reiki Rays is uh, doing once a year. And it's a fantastic event. I'm sure that many of you are on uh, Reiki Race already. And um, uh, I was interviewed by an absolutely wonderful person. It was just phenomenal. We had such a connection. Her name is Yolanda Williams, and uh, she is based in San Diego and uh, here tonight. So a very, very warm welcome, Yolanda. Great having you here. Thank you so much. It's great to be here with you again. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I didn't expect it. I had no idea that I would launch that when, when we were uh, talking. No, I think I, I was actually. No, I wasn't even talking. It was just about the very, very kind of early days. So the idea was there. But, um, mm -hmm. but now, now it's life and real. And um, you are there and life and real as well. And uh, let me just um, look at my paperwork and introduce you so that people get to know you a little bit better and then we'll start having a conversation and uh, invite people to ask questions as well so that we can have a much deeper look at Reiki together. So uh -huh. Yolanda Williams is an intuitive, self-mastery mentor, certified Reiki teacher and host of Reiki Radio podcast. Sorry, sounds all very English when I say that. <laughs> I say <laughs> I can't do that. I can't even, even imitate it. <laughs> she uses a blend of techniques to help clients and students achieve deeper connections with themselves, which facilitates new levels of self-awakening and reveals the dynamics of mind, body, and energy. Her methods have helped Reiki practitioners globally, and she just completed an oracle deck to highlight your connection, relationship, and understanding of what it means to be an authentic expression of true nature. And I really want to go deeper into that because it's just so beautifully put already. Yolanda trained with internationally recognized Reiki masters in the lineages of Usui Reiki Ryoho and Jikiden Reiki. She also trained with shamans and healers of various modalities, increasing her intuitive abilities and exploration of transformative, transformative self-observation. Through the podcast Reiki Radio, she shares tools to support your spiritual journey, including interviews with healers and authors who practice various techniques. Her classes include Usui Reiki Ryoho of all levels in San Diego, as well as mentoring and intuitive awakening courses online. So this is, in a nutshell, what you do. <laughs> and very warm welcome. Great having you here. So who is the person behind and how did that person get to Reiki in the first place? Oh, my goodness. I Wow. Uh, that's an interesting question. Who's the person behind? I actually was, I worked in corporate. I worked in finance. I worked for an international bank. Um, and we, at the time, were going through um, a buyout. Another bank was buying out the division that I worked for. And so I started having anxiety and stress, very common story that people come into Reiki with. And um, I actually went to an astrologer and wanted to know what's going on with my path because I knew after the layoff, I didn't want to go back into the same field. And so I was just looking for clarity. I was stressed out, <laughs> all of those things. Um, and the astrologer is actually who recommended Reiki for a number of reasons and meditation. And I had never heard of Reiki, so went home and Googled and I was like, this sounds insane, what is this? So instead of having a session, I signed up for a class. 
And I ended up that day signing up for Reiki class and meditation classes simultaneously because I was unfamiliar with both. And that's really how it all began. How amazing. So it basically came from the outside. It was just presented to you. And as soon as you looked at it, you decided, no, I don't want to just experience it. I want to practice it. Yes. Yes. I was like, this has to be, I, I can't just have someone do this thing to me. I need to understand what this is because it just sounded so strange, quite frankly. Yeah. So it was my curiosity that led me to class. And then you went, you went deeper. You uh, said in your bio, you went to um, various Reiki teachers. You trained in different traditions. So how, how was that path of learning Reiki? Yeah. So initially, again, I didn't know what I was looking for because I didn't know anything about Reiki. And the recommendation of it was to help me alleviate stress. So in doing research, initially, I just found a local teacher. And, um, you know, I had that experience. But as I was learning, it caused me to research Reiki more. So then I started seeing that there were other lineages, there were other teachers and really looking at what the different teachers were focusing on. So mm -hmm. that even expanded my curiosity. So I did study with um, uh, William Rand. I studied with Frank Arjava Petter. I studied with um, Franz Dina. I studied with so many people. And initially, again, it was just mm -hmm. feeding curiosity until mm -hmm. I realized it was my practice that was starting to teach me. And no matter what information I gained from my teachers, while it was all important and helpful and all these things, I had to apply it. And so I did become very diligent in my practice. And that's when my understanding and relationship to Reiki completely changed from thinking it was um, <laughs> something that was just meant to use externally or that I was separate mm -hmm. from. <clears throat> and started to have experience of realizing it was much more. So what, what is your practice? How now, do you use it for yourself? Yeah, so now, well, I always say if I could only do one thing, it's meditate. And I love meditation because at the foundation of it all, it really does help us to surrender and to move into that state of awareness where we're able to see and experience the physical and non-physical in a different way. So every day I meditate. And then as it comes to my practice of Reiki, as we would say, I also in that space of meditation, just have the intent of surrendering so much that I can become aware of that divine intelligence that already is, that always was and will be, that's present within us in all things. So my practice really is a practice of surrender in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. um, a practice of observation. And of course, sometimes, you know, I throw in there the Gokai and laying of hands on mm -hmm. myself, all of these other elements. So when you say surrender, it basically means letting go of your self-identification and go beyond your individual three-dimensional self. Yes. Well, it starts with letting go of my effort. <laughs> so that was one of the things I learned early on in practice. Um, I remember when I was practicing uh, level one initially, I was trying. I was trying to connect. I was trying to force energy out of my hands. I was trying to do it right. And I was met with a lot of frustration in that, um, realized how much doubt I had in the process. And so I had to learn to surrender my effort and really trust. And again, back up into observation. If Reiki is this divine intelligence, this life force that animates all living things, I don't have to force it. I don't have to try to make it do anything. I simply need to allow myself to get out of the way and observe mm -hmm. and learn and experience. So that is what I mean. When I surrender, it is that <laughs> letting go of effort and then acknowledging the experience of being one with all. 
I find that really, really important. And it's, uh, it's beautiful how you put it. When I started with Reiki, I had a lot of doubt. I could always feel something. So that was um, sure that, that there was something flowing. But the question is whether I was good enough, whether other people were more open, whether they were more focused, whether they were more experienced or w whatever, whether when my mind drifted off, Reiki was still still flowing and uh, i remember often when i gave treatments i was uh, thinking do i do it right do i do it right shall i go here shall i go there and at some stage it confused me so much that i just told myself or the universe or whatever i'm just taking myself myself out yeah. and as soon as i intended that i felt it much more strongly <laughs> it was almost taking over as if i had to create this this openness and this space for reiki to work on we, I, I, I almost felt I was kind of cluttering it, as you would say, with, with my efforts, rather than accepting the more I take myself out and observe and experience and become one with this, with ultimately, which ultimately is, of course, intuition, is becoming one with the false, then, then it's much more powerful. Yeah, and it really points to even what you said, how much the direction of mind plays a part. Because if my mind is directed to my doubt, my questions, my overanalyzing, then that's going to influence my experience and even my understanding and wrap me up in even more effort, right? Whereas if I direct my mind, say, to my breath, and I'm able to surrender to that, but also having an awareness that I'm intending to be in um, awareness of the expression of Reiki, it just it starts to expand because that's what I'm allowing myself to become aware of. And I'm sure even people listening that practice, you know, sometimes you just start talking about Reiki, you direct mm -hmm. your mind to the idea of it. And then all of a sudden you feel your hands tingle or you feel yourself becoming more expansive. Something happens just by directing your awareness to the knowledge of. So yeah, it's, it's a, magical really is that what you mean with self-awakening yes to yeah. go beyond to realize there's much more to us and the more we embrace that not trying hard but letting go and surrendering then we become more our, our true self absolutely and i think it's one of those gifts of reiki that you will bump against whether you are intending to do that or not because i mean i wasn't I really was trying to learn the technique. I was trying to be good at laying of hands and understanding biosyn scanning. And, you know, initially a lot of my focus was externalized. Like how can I support others? And while I was enjoying meditation and, um, you know, working with the symbols and these things, it took a while for me to really redirect it into how is this changing me? And that's where everything took a turn, where I started to recognize, wow, I'm processing feelings in a different way. I'm starting to perceive things differently. I'm starting to have different curiosities. I just, I noticed how I was changing mm. in mind, in my level of compassion. All of these different things started to shift and I could only attribute it to this system, these practices that I was um, allowing myself to play with, essentially. And then it was like, wait, 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 there's so much more going on here, what's happening. And then I started to be more curious and observant of that. Right. I'm putting this banner in. Um, your website is the energeticalchemist.com. Yes. And um, this is where you um, offer your, your, your courses and uh, uh, talk about uh, yourself and uh, your, your work and uh, your ideas. So, and I had a look at it. I think it's, it's absolutely wonderful what's on there and um, how you show that your personal development um, is something that for you is very much the basis of how you teach Reiki. So yes. as, a, as a tool for self-development and for change in uh, in different directions yeah so when people come to you and say will it help me with this will it help me with that how does it going to change uh, me how you would you answer that 
The way I like to think of it, I give the example of the impact that we all have on everyone and everything that we come into contact with. So for example, if you were just, you know, existing in your own energy, having whatever day you are having, and then you walk into a room with two people who were arguing, you all of a sudden feel that shift. You feel the tension between them. You feel impacted by the energy that you just walked into. And so we have a lot of evidence, whether you practice energy work or any of these things, of recognizing situations and circumstances where we absolutely not only sense and feel energy or the non-physical, but how it does impact us. Even watching the news and feeling so much empathy and crying for what you see other people going through, it all points to that, you know, non-dual aspect of our interconnectedness, right? Because we feel it all. Um, so with Reiki, I try to get people to first of all recognize the impact of coming into relationship with self. And as you start to observe you outside of judgment and allow yourself to come into a space of healing, having more compassion for you, having more understanding for you, it changes the nature of how you are expressing. It's going to change the nature of your mind. It's going to open up your heart. It helps you to start to trust, to become more vulnerable, all of these different layers of expression. But then if you think about it, if you become more love filled and then you go out into the world, everyone and everything you come into contact with is going to feel that essence just as strongly as you would have felt the tension in the room with other people. Absolutely. So by that way, it's like Reiki in of itself is showing us that we, we are contributing to the whole and we can do that in love even beyond laying of hands. Yes. It's through your expression. So, yeah. I think that that's really, really beautiful to put. So the more we change, the more we affect the world and automatically the world changes. And we do that on the quantum level because that's the level we all connected on. So we really have a very, very big impact. And I find it very interesting when we look at the news or when somebody is crying next door or when a work colleague has a bad day, of course, it affects us. Mm -hmm. And it's um, and uh, so many people come and ask how they can basically shield themselves from this because they feel so empathic. And there is this, uh, I, I call it a fashion word of being an empath mm -hmm. and uh, uh, how to deal with that. For me, that is just the greatest expression of who we really are. Right. Because we are all connected. Yeah. But of course, uh, then we take it on so much that it's... Um, it's very difficult in our everyday life to deal with all the difficulties and negativity. And by working, as you describe, on ourselves and realizing the only thing I can do, and indeed the only thing I must do, is become a better person, become more aligned, and let that filter into the world. Yes. I mean, to me, I think Reiki absolutely has helped me learn to cultivate more love within my being within my awareness and so that strengthens us energetically so i i love that conversation of empaths because i was prior to getting to energy work i was very sensitive to energy but didn't understand it so i was the weird friend that you know we would go somewhere and i wouldn't want to be there and it seemed like i had no reason but i just was uncomfortable or i would meet certain people and completely you know, recoil, but I didn't know why. So it was just all very odd. But um, once I started coming into relationship with energy and understanding how malleable it is, how malleable the mind is, how connected we all are, it gave me more understanding that if I, again, cultivate and manage my energy, very specifically healing here, it's going to help me become more compassionate, more understanding, seeing from a higher lens. And in that vein, I can also observe what someone else is projecting. I can still feel and recognize if you're hurting and I can still have empathy. Mm -hmm. But in that awareness, I'm still managing my energy. Yes. And in that choice, then I get to help 
more so uplift whatever this is going on in the environment that I'm in rather than without being in my mindfulness, allowing my energy to be brought down and match the frequencies that I'm tuning into. And I think that's an interesting thing too, because I think in our nature, we want to feel familiar. We want to, um, uh, you know, like acknowledge sameness, like, oh, Torsten, you and I both do Reiki. So there's our commonality. So now we can be friends. And I think we do this even energetically, like, oh, you're hurting. I have to come down and match that so that it's relatable. Mm -hmm. and really, I can allow love to be a higher expression and help that to nourish both of us and whatever is going on. Yeah. Well, would you say that the foundation of that to a certain degree is self-love as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that the components within the system of Reiki point us to that. So if we look at the Gokai or if we look at even the symbols, um, I remember initially when I learned about symbols, I thought they were just an externalized thing that I use in session, draw them to mm -hmm. do different things to energy. And then um, with other teachers and then through my practice, I started to look at my relationship to the symbols. What were they teaching me? What were they revealing to me energetically, right? So this sense of empowerment, the importance of self-connection, the mm -hmm. healing and purifying of heart, mind, and moving us into that awareness that we're separate from no thing. And then moving on to being the expression of the great bright light. But the point of it all was that even in the system, it was directing us to this awareness of love within our own beingness and how that then translates to the love and the compassion for all there is. So self-love really is the realization I am love because I am loved. I am part of this 11 and interconnectedness. So once I feel that, then I can start sharing it. Yeah. And I want to say, I mean, for anyone who does this work, I'm sure you know, it sounds great and it's not an easy path. It's not. There are mm -hmm. so many reasons that we judge and criticize ourselves without even realizing the conditions we put on our value and worthiness of being loved or accepting that we are loved. Like, how could I be loved when I did something horrendous to, you know, so there's obviously a lot of healing that comes in just that self-focus. Mm -hmm. But again, the beauty is as you do it, it's impacting all. So yeah, I, yes. I'm, yeah. I love it all, Torsten. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's quite interesting as, as Reiki teachers to um, take the liberty Uh, to be also a normal person right. rather than being the person that uh, we think we should be in order to fulfill a certain role. And I, I had that a uh, few times where people said, oh, you're doing this, you're doing that. You, um, uh, I, I wouldn't have expected that from you. It wasn't something kind of nasty or weird, just that I love cooking. I, have, uh, I like um, uh, having a good glass of wine. I like enjoying myself. I go out and things like that. And, and people think, oh, Well, hmm, I thought you would kind of meditate all day long. <laughs> That's interesting. And I'm sure, sure with your, especially with your background of having a very normal life. Yes. Yeah. I remember when I, well, not when I first started the podcast, but when people finally started really tuning in, I would get emails um, that express people thought that's what I was doing. Like I was meditating all day and I was just like a baby Buddha. And I was like, what? No, it's everyday life in my normal life <laughs> that is teaching me to help me understand more of this dynamic energy. And it's helping me to have even more of an appreciation of our day-to-day -day interactions. Like mm -hmm. how am I showing up in my relationships? How am I showing up in work? How am I showing up in exchange with someone in the grocery store that I don't even know? So the, the level of awareness that um, this practice brings has just been the ultimate gift all the way around. 
And you have a link, I suppose, on your website, I don't remember it, to your Reiki uh, radio podcast as well. I do, yes. Actually, I um, haven't posted any podcasts since January because I've been traveling and finishing the Oracle deck, but I am starting season nine um, this fall. So, yeah, there will be new episodes coming right. this fall. <laughs> and yeah. all the old ones uh, are yeah. on now that people oh, can. Oh, yeah. You can, can go to the That's that's absolutely brilliant. Um, this now side I sidetracked myself. <laughs> I wanted to ask something because you just said something about how we basically share it with uh, uh, other people, with the world, with our re in our relationship um, within our family. And I tend to find that this for many people really is the hardest. It's not sharing it with the neighbor or with uh, a completely random uh, person on the street or a client or in a, a conversation or so, but um, at home with um, people who have known us all our lives or at least for a long time and kind of uh, des uh, decided they know everything about us and suddenly we change and they don't initially necessarily get it and rather think we're just a bit weird and odd. Yes. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people deal with that. I'm an Aquarius. I'm good with being weird. I, I don't mind. <laughs> But um, yes, I mean, a lot of people do um, deal with that. And I think it's part of the healing process. It's part of that coming into our own self-acceptance. Despite what you may think of me or the box that you want to put me in, am I okay with who I'm becoming? Do I believe in the work and the shifts and the changes that I'm going through? So I think that those... Um, mirrors and those uh, relationships that have a particular dance that may be an old dance we don't want to do anymore. They really do give us a, a great opportunity to own more of the work that we're doing. Do you find it easy to talk with family um, about what you're doing about Reiki or uh, to to even invite them to also learn it or yeah. is it not for you? Well, when I first started, I was just excited. I mean, because it, it was amazing. Like I'm feeling energy out of my hands. And so I was excited to talk to my friends and my family about this. And, you know, there are some people in my family who are very religious and want no parts of it for whatever their beliefs are. And I'm fine with that too. I, I outside of or growing past just the excitement of it, now I'm in a space of, I'll share with you what I do. I hope that who I am as a person and my expression reveals the, the essence of what it is I practice and believe in, but I don't try to force it. You know, even though the people closest to us, we want to help them the most, you know, we, we want, want to help them, but we don't live with the fear they may end up in hell yeah, because no. uh, they won't. There is no hell. Right. <laughs> so yeah. so the it, world is not in, divided in good and bad, Reiki practitioners and others. Reiki right. is just a way to realize we are all connected, whether or not the other person knows it as well. And that's exactly it. And then you just have understanding for and respect that everyone is where they are on their path. If my family or friends reach out and ask me, for support or ask me about what I practice, then yeah, but I don't force it on anyone. Thank you so much. This was running so fast, um, half an hour conversation, and we are kind of getting towards, uh, uh, to, towards the end. Um, I would love to get together for a few moments of Reiki Share again with, uh, with everybody. Um, and I'm just looking if there is a particular question, but I can't even really see see any. What I would like to suggest is if there are any questions anybody has about Reiki, about this uh, particular conversation uh, we are, are having at present, do send me an email, do send us an email, or I'll pass it, pass it on so that we can go deeper um, Uh, as well, but um, I somehow feel we really kind of went quite deep. I've so been looking forward to that conversation because I thought we would uh, be able to just uh, kind of go a little bit beyond the healing hands, which are amazing, oh. but ultimately just an extension yes. 
of the love that we hold inside. And once we focus on that, rather than the extension, this becomes much more powerful. Yes, yes. And it radiates from every aspect of your being. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you so much for sharing that. So thank you, um, Yolanda, for being here. And I will now move on. Um, I will just mute you for a moment again. So <laughs> bye-bye. <laughs> stay on. <laughs> And um, uh, I would like to connect with everybody now to share Reiki once more. It's, of course, our connection to the universe. But our everyday life, all the struggles, the difficulties, the setbacks um, that we have, the doubts that we have, um, kind of build up these layers in between. So there are there is a, or an, always has been a very, very important aspect of Reiki to share it with other people and not just to give it, but also to receive it from other people. This is another layer, another expression of the oneness that we can just experience Reiki going in all directions. And that's exactly what we, we're going to do right now. So when you're ready, I would like to ask you to just bring your hands together once more, close your eyes and set your intention to connect to Reiki, however you do it, however you've learned it. And just take a moment to feel the connection, any sensation you feel in your hands or in your body. And then just place one hand on yourself, whether it's on your heart or heart chakra or a particular area of your body where you feel Reiki is needed right now. And then just open your other hand and set your intention to connect with everybody on this Reiki share today, tonight, or at any time in the future when anybody is going to watch a replay and tune in as well. So let's just set our intention to connect with everybody. If you learned the connection or distance symbol, then you can utilize that and really feel the connection with everybody. So you are connected to Reiki, you're receiving Reiki, and you can share it with everybody, which you're doing right now. And at the same time, you are receiving Reiki from everybody as well. So it's this web of interconnectedness, of love, of healing energy, of oneness.
you may just want to set your intention to deeply surrender. Just send this message to your subconscious using Yolanda's suggestion to surrender to Reiki, to surrender to the universe. And then you can bring your hands once more together in gasho. Just bring your hands, the palms facing, and take a moment to thank Reiki. Just feel the gratitude for this connection. So thank you so very much for sharing, for being a very powerful part in this Reiki share and bringing more of the love that Reiki is into the world. Um, I have one more thing that I wanted to share and I've been uh, uh, thinking about whether, whether I should. But um, uh, everything we do here for the um, uh, Reiki Revolution and the um, uh, program every Tuesday is entirely free and is meant to be free. But there are some costs in the background as well. And it is also quite uh, time consuming to do everything. So it was suggested that I should uh, just put a button on the Reiki Revolution website. And um, I have actually managed somehow to do that today. Um, the website is thereikirevolution.com and uh, when you scroll down a little bit you will find uh, two buttons, one donate in dollars, one donate in pounds. And uh, if you feel, if you honestly just really feel in your heart you can and you would like to support this and give $2, two pounds, or whatever you are able to 
uh, effort and uh, and help with this this would be really helpful to keep uh, this all going but um honestly only if you can and if you really feel it it's meant to be free so this is just an additional help uh, for us but if you uh, do have the ability to go to the reikirevolution.com and find these buttons i hope i've set it up all correctly today because i did it myself but um, uh, but i think it uh, it should have worked and you will also find some more information about the upcoming uh, workshop at alternatives in london uh, Reiki for Inner Peace on the 30th of July, which will be live streamed and available as a replay. So you can also uh, join in internationally. And it's going to be a whole day of experience, experience, experience. And that's what we need. I think it's really important to do that in a group as well. And once again, a very, very big thank you to this wonderful, to Yolanda and this wonderful conversation uh, we had today where we went deeper into Reiki is hard work. <laughs> it is. Our path with Reiki is really work. And it prompts us to go deeper and deeper. But it's so incredibly rewarding to ultimately realize that as a result, I'm not on my own anymore. I'm one with everything and I can feel it and I can experience it and I can become a beacon of this love and this light in the world. And on this path of learning, it's so important and helpful to get together with people on the same path, to feel the connection and feel the support. And this is what we are having here on the Tuesdays. And this is also what we are uh, having in the workshops and all the um, uh, group events that uh, that we are putting on um, quite regularly so that we can really go deeper and deeper and get the support from everybody. Once again, thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for being part of this wonderful movement. We need to revolutionize ourselves. We need to go beyond the bloody ego and realize we are something very different. We are all connected. And once we do, this is an automatic revolution. This is tapping into the way the world has been set up. So with this, have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful rest of the evening, wherever you are in the world. And I can't wait to see you again next Tuesday. So goodbye. And uh, with all these technical things, I need to now press a button, which I need to find. There's the button. So once again, a very good rest of the day, a very good night.